Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and this is the award-winning 2024 Hyundai Ioniq 6. This is actually a vehicle we've tested and reviewed for you here on the channel already. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing something just a little bit different. I'm going to be responding to some of your comments after living with this one for a week. How does it hold up and what do I like? Stay tuned. Yes, gearheads, we're going to do something just a little bit different with this one since I already have content here for you on the channel. I was lucky enough to be in Los Angeles at the LA Auto Show for the global debut of this vehicle. And then we were invited out by Hyundai to Savannah to drive it for the first time. So there is already content on the channel and we've got more content coming for you with this exact vehicle, including our family review with Holly and perhaps a road trip video with this one to see just how it holds up to our Texas EV charging infrastructure. Spoiler alert, there's nothing wrong with the car. There's a little bit wrong to do with the infrastructure, but all of that is coming. So be sure and hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you are notified when those videos drop. But the point of this video is to reply to some of your comments, especially after having lived with this vehicle for a week and kind of gotten to know it a little bit better than my two limited stints with it before. Our first comment comes from Lynn Clement 646. Thank you so much for your review. Very informative. I bought a six rear wheel drive white limited four weeks ago. Awesome choice. I love it. I use my car for work on most Fridays and I go about 166 miles round trip. Sounds like you're the perfect candidate for this one. I use Eco, so do I, and the second level of Virgin on braking. On Friday, I mostly go 60 to 65 miles per hour. I live in Central Florida. It has been 90 plus for two months now. Sounds like Florida to me. I use both air and the ventilated seat and I average 4.1 per kilowatt hour on a Friday trip. That is impressive efficiency. Best I've seen is 3.5 so far. I make sure to uh, have it fully charged up so I have no range anxiety. I have a level two charger my husband put in for our electric van. Very good job pointing out all the features. I also keep my screen with the black background, much prettier. I'm older and had no problem adjusting to the shifter or the window buttons, which we'll talk about later. I was told by the salesman the black spoiler has solar built into it to help the small battery with accessories. It also has a heat pump. Such a great car. Well, for the most part, that is a great comment. Thank you so much. We love hearing from actual owners on this one. But there is one small discrepancy or small fallacy in what you were told by your dealership. The black spoiler back here having solar built into it. Unfortunately, it sounds like your uh, dealer was perhaps misinformed and you may go check back with him to make sure he's not telling anyone else that because this right here is not a solar panel. This is actually a clever disguise for an often oddly placed item that is required by the government, the chimsel or center high mounted stop lamp that has been required since, well, practically I've been alive and that is the third brake light. You can already see here, we've got our brake lights here on the side that also double as turn signals. We've got the LED running lights back here, but I'm gonna go inside and put my foot on the brake and show you exactly what I'm talking about. This is perhaps one of the coolest features of the rear design of this vehicle. Our next comment comes from Pete Sig 93 He says, one of the often unmentioned advantages of the center console is that it is flat. Makes it much easier to sit a laptop on it and do some work or watch a video while stopped out of a break waiting for the vehicle to charge. Yeah, Hyundai paid special attention to this center console and made it a point of differentiation between it and the Ionic 5's movable console. We've got this bridge atmosphere that is flat and it holds all of our controls for our windows and our door locks all right here, which is kind of Jeep-esque. But as you pointed out, it is nice and flat. So that should prove to be a good place to snuggle up and watch a movie. Heated steering wheel, 
Probably unnecessary here in Australia, but I'd love a cooled steering wheel. You and me both, Pete. You and me both. Our next comment comes from Everything Between 4440, who says, Love the car. I will say one thing. I do not envy your vehicles in some part of the USA where you have those ugly looking amber lights on the side and front compared to our white daytime running lights. The car just looks a million times better. And to be fair, every vehicle without those daft amber lights stuck on the front and side look much better. I guess you're referencing these? Maybe these? Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, those aren't going away. Thank the US government. Hmm. Our next comment comes from our good friend Martin. Martin says, Thank you, Holly and Corey, for a nice review of the Ionic 6. I would much rather have the 6 than the 5. Thanks for your comment, Martin. I absolutely agree with you. I think this Ionic 6 definitely stands out a little more than that extremely angular Ionic 5. I mean, have you seen this profile on any other vehicle? Our next comment comes from Mental Magic, who says, Holly is absolutely beautiful. You need to let her talk more. She rocks. Couldn't agree more with ya. Our next comment comes from KylieFan7, who says, My three least favorite parts about the 6 are the regeneration, no L mode like in the Bolt EV, the LG batteries, and the price. Has anyone tested the extended range without all the bells and whistles? Well, Kylie Fan 7, I actually saw that Hyundai recently had a lease offer on these for that very model, the Base SE Long Range, 320 miles of range for $249 a month for two years with 12,000 miles available each year. That was an absolute steal. And I am still kicking myself for not being able to take advantage of that one before it expired because our local dealership got the vehicle that qualified two days after the lease offer expired. E. And while we're talking about price, uh, the starting price of this vehicle has actually gone down from when we tested the 2023 model in Savannah, Georgia. The 2023s started at $45,500. They have dropped that down to $42,450, a 6.7% decrease. And this particular model has dropped from $57,875, like we tested in Savannah, down to $54,975, which is about a 5% decrease. So Hyundai has already made observations and consolations to that pricing problem. Our next comment comes from this guy called uh, I am geek 246 weird screen name. He's my brother. He says, I think it was Corey. And for that, well, you're just going to have to go back and watch our Savannah video. Which uses hey, the, you're gonna that have wasn't to me. Roll a window that that was not me. That wasn't me. I can guarantee you it was not Corey. Because it's very easy to stop and go. <laughs> You're a mess. But <laughs> to adjust. I'm sorry. I just happened. Now because I'm not supposed to laugh, I'm laughing. <laughs> Get I was... it out. Get it out. <laughs> but I just started thinking like, so did you think I farted? Our next comment comes from Paul Fowler, 3416, who says, Why are people so unnerved by EV driving and why this weird objection to regen and one-pedal driving? Bizarre. Well, Paul, I would say a lot of that has to come from unfamiliarity. I know that it is an ongoing trend meme to talk about Uber drivers who don't know how to use regen and one-pedal driving. And I think it's just because people expect to be able to drive this like a normal car with regen on. But people like my six-year-old son, who essentially has a one-pedal driving electric vehicle and his Jeep Power Wheels, they're not going to have this problem. They grow up on, you let off the accelerator and it slows down. So I really think it is just a learning curve that most people don't get to experience. I know you are mostly responding to the fact that Holly isn't the best at it. And that's because we have such short time with these vehicles. If we had like a month to live with one of these or something a little bit longer than a week, I feel like Holly would be using more than just level, level one regen. But that's yet to be seen. Our next comment comes from Kid Kingdom Hearts, who says, I can already see what's going to make this car a looker. Ducktail spoiler, 
lower ride height, smaller rims, more tire, wider wheels, front lip spoiler, and matte dark paint. Well, I thank you for your comment. And while Hyundai is really amped and pushing that Ionic 5 as an SUV, this is billed more as a traditional sedan, though don't call it that. They call it a streamliner. Again, that very unique shape. But yes, I can see what you're talking about, the wheels and tires. Unfortunately, on our limited model, we've got the 20-inch wheels with Pirelli rubber on them, which do decrease overall range versus that base SE model, but sure make this thing look very good from the side. And yes, because it's a car or a streamliner, whatever you want to call it, it does feel like it rides a little bit lower. Though, driving it, I feel that it's about the same as the Ioniq 5. And yes, uh, on that paint issue, we have this transmission blue that is quite beautiful and very striking and does uh, shimmer a little bit more in direct sunlight than this overcast day. Our next comment comes from Cody Shavaria, 6088. Good name, Cody. And he says, I hope it's a true hatchback. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Woo. <laughs> Woo. <sighs> Yeah, unfortunately, it's a, it's a real trunk. That was uncomfortable. Our next comment comes from PQV8898, who says, All I know is it's ugly as heck. Ugly as heck? Ugly as heck? This thing looks so cool and so original. Okay, the front is perhaps my least favorite part of it, but the further around the back you get, the more I love this vehicle. I mean... Just keep looking at it. Look at that booty. Look at that booty. My goodness. And my last and most favorite comment actually didn't come from either of those previous videos featuring this vehicle. It actually was from another Hyundai video from someone who I had a little bit of a back and forth conversation with. I'll keep his G-rated comments uh, a little more G-rated, but the last one is what absolutely stood out to me. Point is here, there's nothing original about Hyundai Motors. The only real reason they've been around this long but uh, failed to lead in any segment is their lack of originality. Lack of originality, G-rated. Have you seen this car? There's nothing else like it on the road. What's wrong with you? I mean, have you seen the booty on this car? Name another vehicle that looks anything like this that is currently being sold on the market. This thing absolutely stands out and turns heads everywhere we drive it. Lack of an originality? I think you're a little bit delusional. Eek. Well, that is about it for your comments. Now about my comments. I really liked this when we were in Savannah. I really like the Ionic 5, and this isn't too big a departure in the overall scheme of things. It is really more or less a different design built on the same skateboard platform. So we still get that large battery. We still get dual motor all wheel drive. We still get plenty of power. And I already mentioned those Pirelli performance tires underneath us. So there's really a lot to like about this. I have said for a long time and will continue saying that EVs make excellent luxury vehicles and that is absolutely the truth with this one. Long wheelbase equals comfortable ride and more room inside. The instantaneous torque and lack of transmission, even though this one is called transmission blue, in the paint job means that it just goes when you want it to go effortless power and we've got plenty of it here in this top trim limited all-wheel drive and it has made driving it around very easy and then we get to the looks of it i know i keep bringing up the looks of it but there's something that reminds me like of an old Saab or an old porsche or porsche that really kind of gives a professorial vibe. I, I feel like I should be driving around in a tweed jacket when driving this around town. And it does just 
elevate the experience just a little bit for me. I don't really feel like I'm in a Hyundai. I feel like I'm in something a little quirkier and odder and just a little more out there like an old Saab. It really does have a unique character all its own, even though, like I said, it is based on that same Ionic 5 substructure skateboard platform. It, it, it's a completely different vehicle once you live with it, and it really does stand out on the road. I have turned a lot of heads uh, driving this vehicle around, and uh, it is a very unique design all the way around. Another benefit of that very unique design, I've alluded to it already, is the efficiency of this vehicle. We have put over uh, or just under 400 miles on it so far, and we are averaging 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour consumed with this. That is incredibly impressive when it comes to its overall uh, efficiency. It is perhaps the most efficient vehicle uh, that I've driven that is powered by electrons here on the channel. I've been very impressed and I have even seen stints driving around town where I actually see a four as the leading number on that. So that is even more impressive. And yes, I've been driving around in eco drive mode a lot, but there is also normal and sport. And that absolutely sends this thing soaring and moving very fast. Like it will go and put your head back. And it has been a lot of fun when I push this drive mode button. All right, the light's about to turn green. I'm full on the brake, full on the accelerator, not the gas. And as soon as that light turns green, I'm letting off the brake and we're taking off. Oh my goodness. This thing will scoot 60. Woo! She's quick. She will move. That all wheel drive traction, instantaneous. That all wheel drive torque, electric torque, everything instantaneous. This thing will scoot with the best of them, especially if you are in sport mode. Sport mode does cut back on the range a smidge. Uh, I saw 287 when I unplugged this from our Electron charger. More about them down in the description. And that was in eco mode. I've been driving, having a little fun with it since then. And now in sport mode, I see 257. If I put it back in e eco mode, it bumps me back up to 273. And yes, I've already seen a tenth of a mile per kilowatt hour decrease on the gauge cluster in front of me, but still very impressed with the overall efficiency of this vehicle. But for the most part, I've been driving it around in eco mode with one pedal drive because it, again, just fits that professorial vibe that I've had the entire time that we've had it. It also has that very chill blue paint job. And it doesn't hurt that when we were delivered this vehicle, we were listening to Sirius XM watercolors, smooth jazz, which also kind of lends to that chill professorial vibe. All the way around, it is very fun. It does kind of have a, a dual personality when you do hit that drive mode and sport button. And I've already seen spy shots that Hyundai is working on an in variant of this vehicle. We already know the Ionic 5 has gotten an in variant and that thing is insane. So I can only imagine what they do when they apply that same treatment here to the six. Or how are they gonna change it up? They do consider this a car where they consider that an SUV. Is that gonna change their approach? Are they gonna make it just as bonkers with a different skin? I don't know, but you can stay tuned uh, to find out more about that from us as we get to experience it. If you wanna see the other two videos we have shot while we've had this exact vehicle, absolutely hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you are notified every time a new video drops from us. Find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, Threads, YouTube, you name it, all at GT Garage Talk or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for me, behind the wheel of my Professor Mobile and the 2024 Hyundai Ionic 6 Limited all-wheel drive, until next time, gearheads, bye. So I am gonna turn one pedal brake off we're gonna turn it to sport mode. We are at a red light. Does it let us preload? Nope, 
nothing happens uh, when we stand on the brake and push the accelerator. So when the light turns green, we're just gonna see how that all-wheel drive traction hooks up and what we've got working with us underneath here.